Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is the second video in creating GUIs in Java. Um, <clears throat> if you didn't watch the first one, I recommend uh, go back and, uh, and watch the first one uh, prior to watching this one because it talks. We're going to go a little quicker this time. Um, so if you need any of the background information, uh, you're better to watch the first video. So the next thing we're going to add to our view. Last time we got together, we uh, we created this um, this little program that allows us to you know select checkboxes and order pizza based on which checkboxes are selected. The next thing we're going to add is called a, um, a choice box. And the idea with the choice box is it's going to be kind of like a little uh, drop down kind of menu that uh, will show us our selection on top. So let's close this and go right into scene builder and get started. Okay, so this is what we created last time. If you remember, it was uh, we used a container called a vertical box, and then we've added in a label. We had three check boxes, and then a button and another label. So let's do something similar here. Let's take a vertical box, and we'll put it over here. And we can make them the same dimensions. So this one, let's go over to layout. This one here, let's make them 200 wide. Okay. And then we can choose our other view box, and we'll say the preferred width is 200 as well. Okay, so now these are the exact same size, or at least the same. Uh, we can do uh, let's just do a multi-select here, choose them both, and make them both uh, 300 pixels tall. Now you see, when I had them both selected there, they don't line up perfectly. Now we can drag them around and try to get things just right. But rather than do that, it's actually a lot easier just to put them inside of, if we want them side by side, then there's there's a container that does that for us called a horizontal box, hbox. So I'm going to bring in this hbox. Oops, got inside of our view box here. Let's just make it go the width of the screen. And then we can drag the vertical boxes inside of our H box. Mm. And the advantage to this is that it uh, now everything's lined up. And if we actually wanted to move things, we can actually just drag, grab the whole H box as one thing, even though we might have numerous items within it. So let's start off. We'll put in a label. So I'm going to go to controls, label, and just like last time, this one here, we're going to call it choice box. Choice box object. And we'll make it bold italic and size 18. Okay, so now these will look kind of the same. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here into my controls and drag in a choice box. And We'll add in a, similar to before, we'll add in a button and we'll add in a label. So the choice box, we can always, I mean, it's easy enough to use, but then we'll push a button to update our label just to, to show how to get information out of the checkbox. Now here we can see everything's really bunched together in this vertical box and this was nicely spaced here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have my V box selected, go over here to layout. And under spacing, let's make it 10. So I'll space it down a bit. And then, just like before, you always have to hit save when you go between scene builder and your development environment. So I'm going to go over to um, NetBeans now. And in our controller, right? So remember, this is what we're working with. We have a view, which is what we're building in scene builder. And that's just an XML document, it's just objects that are laid out on a screen, that's it. The logic and the decision making goes in the controller and the controller can access the elements in the view, it can populate information into them, it can pull information from them and the controller can then pass that information back and forth to models. So in here, uh, last time, let's see here, so we'll say uh, these items were for the uh, checkbox. And then we'll say these items 
are for the choice box example. Okay, so we're going to do the same. We put in this add fxml tag so that uh, our controller can now talk with the uh, the XML file and we'll say private. Now here I'm going to say choice box, and I'm just going to call this the choice box. And make sure we add in our imports. And again, make sure you always get the JavaFX ones. And then um, we have uh, a label that we're going to update. So we'll say uh, private label. And that label, we'll just call it the choice box label. Good names, right? So we'll hit save. Go back into scene builder. Where's my scene builder? Well, it's easier just to. Push the button. Here we go. So now I have my choice box. So I select my item. I go down to code on the lower right and I can select the ID. So it's my choice box. And then we don't need to label, we don't need to update our button. Um, here we can say, we're gonna, we're gonna put some fruit in here. So maybe I'll just say, um, update uh, uh, favorite fruit. And then our label down here, go, oops, label, go to my code and here I can say that's my choice box label and I hit save and what you'll see is on the left hand side here this hierarchy it, it's actually a really useful utility because in it we can actually see each of the elements and the other thing that's really nice about this is this is exactly what your XML file is going to look like right so at the top it's going to be an anchor pane and then a horizontal box and then two vertical boxes if we go back in and we look at that actual XML document here we have the anchor pane and um, doo -doo -doo. there's their V box, one V box, two V box, there's our H box, right? So it goes anchor pane, H box, and then there's the two V boxes, <laughs> right? So it's set up just, just like this hierarchy here. Okay, so we're gonna go into our controller now and Let's just add a couple comments from our old text. Uh, box example. And then here, uh, we can say this will uh, update the label for choice box. So we take our choice box and we, um, <clears throat> or sorry, our choice box label, and we're gonna set the text. And what we have to do is we have to read what uh, text our choice box had selected. So all we have to do is we say choice box dot get the value. Now the thing is, it, it'll return an object, but it's not a defined object in terms of a specific type. So if you look at it, it starts to error. It says, well, a string cannot be converted to an object. Um, and that's just because the way that uh, get value works, it doesn't say, hey, I'm returning a string. So all we have to do is say, well, convert that to a string. And then it'll be happy. Now, the other thing we need to do with our choice box, it kind of went a little backwards here. I said, here's how we get information out of it, but I never showed you how to put information into it. So let's go down to the initialize method. Now remember, this, this is a special method that gets called um, whenever the GUI is loaded. So we'll say these items are for configuring the choice box example. So we had the uh, choice box label. We'll set the text to be just empty for now to start. And then for the checks, the check box, the choice box, my, my excuse me, um, so our choice box, what we're gonna do is we have to 
call this command called get items. And what it does is it returns any of the items that are currently in the check the choice box. Even if there's no items there, it at least returns an empty list. Just like picture an array list. Except this one's observable objects. And then we can add to that list. So I'm gonna say add. And in here we'll say apples. And then we can add in a few others, like bananas. And if we want, we can even add a whole bunch at once. I'll say add all. And we'll put in oranges, pears, mm, and delicious strawberries. And if we hit save, let me go back in here. We have our choice box set up. Our favorite fruit button, we need the call our choice box button is pushed. So we call our method. And our label, it's already got an ID, so we can hit save. Go back into NetBeans here now. Let's hit our go button. And it comes up, and our old code still works. And now when we see the drop down, you can see apples, bananas, oranges, strawberries. Now you see by default, nothing is selected. We can change that. We can set the initial value. I'll show you in a second. But right now, if I say my, if I selected bananas, I hit favorite fruit, it says bananas. And if I click on pears, it'll say pears. So this works well. So let's set an initial value uh, for the, um, for our choice box. So to do that, I just go in here in the initialize method, and I'm gonna say choice box, set the value to be apples to start. And I think I'm gonna update the text here to be a little more interesting. I'm gonna say my favorite fruit is Let's try running that again. Okay, so if I, oranges, now it says my favorite fruit is oranges. And if I update to strawberries, favorite fruit is strawberries. So it works great. Um, so this is a nice way if you had like a, a defined list of items that um, you wanted someone to, to pick th one from, this works well. So there you have it. Um, Let's put this on to GitHub so that if you ever want to access any of these, um, you can. So uh, I'm going to go to GitHub and let's create a new repository here. And I'm going to call this the GUI demo and say this shows some, uh, let's see here. So I'll create this repository. And if you ever want to access it, you just go to github.com slash Jarrett slash GUI demo, and you'll be able to get access to this code that we're building. So I'm going to go here into my project, and right click, go down to versioning, initialize the Git repository. And if you want to know if you want to know a little bit more about Git, there's another video in my uh, in my channel that uh, that talks about how to set this up. And uh, so we've got it. Now we can go remote. Push. Oops, no branches selected. I didn't do the commit yet.
Okay. So now, if you want access to our code that we just looked at, all you have to do is go to my git, uh, so you go to github.com slash jira, right? And then go to my repositories, look up the GUI demo, and then here, under the source code, you can see there's the FXML document, the controller, and our, uh, our uh, class that we used to launch the whole program. All right, that's great. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.